Nope, 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 that's enough of that. Time's up, we're all done with that. No more fun for us. They fucked it up. So Death Note, the movie, again. Wow, I, I didn't think it could get worse, but uh, after watching the anime, whoo, it was... Uh, where do I even start with this train wreck? I mean, I don't even know. There's just so much wrong with it that I wasn't even aware of the first time. And oh my God, it's just, it's so frustrating. Before I get into any of this, spoilers. Lots of them. I guess I'll start off by talking about the main character. So in the anime, the main character is named Light Yagami, and he is this brilliant, genius, high school student prodigy type character. He's awesome, he's also a psycho, and uh, he uses the Death Note to try and become the god of the new world. He's, he's crazy, he's fascinating, he's interesting, he's, he's a really cool main character. In the movie, there is also a main character named Light. Don't know who he is because he bears no resemblance to the light from the anime. Light Yagami from the anime is a genius. A certified bona fide genius. Light from the movie is just a doofy high school student. He's got no personality, he's got no defining characteristics, he's just a dumb, stupid high school student. No different from any of the others. He's nothing special. I don't understand how you go from this brilliant psychopath with an IQ of probably above 200 to this idiot high school student. I just, I don't understand how you make that leap. And on top of that, they try to make the light in the movie like a normal, sympathetic human being, and that's not who light from the anime is. He's a psychopath. He's a sociopath. He has no sympathetic qualities, and he's not supposed to have them because he is a villain. You can't just take the light from the movie and then try and turn him into a good guy. That is the complete antithesis of who this character is supposed to be. But on that note, I'm going to talk about Light's family from the movie because they made some interesting choices about his family to try and justify why he does what he does with the Death Note. So in the anime, Light Yagami has a very normal family. He has a mom, he has a dad, he has a little sister. Nothing fancy about him. In the movie, they decided that his mother needed to be killed by a ruthless gangster and this would motivate Light to want to kill all the criminals and rid the world of crime with the Death Note. So I mean, I kind of guess I understand why they made that change because maybe they felt like Light needed some kind of motivation to want to kill everyone with the Death Note once he came into possession of it. But again, that's not who Light is. That is not his character. Light Yagami in the anime is a freak. He uses the Death Note because he is obsessed with power. He wants to rule the world. He doesn't need motivation because someone did something bad to his family. He's just crazy. The fact that they then took Light's family in the movie and they used it to sort of give him some motivation that was unnecessary to his character just makes no sense to me. It's, it's ridiculous. Why would you make this change? At least they got his dad sort of right in the sense that they're both cops, but they're just, they're not very similar. Light's dad in the anime is this very staunch and professional and serious detective who is completely driven by justice and upholding the law, which is a good contrast to who Light Yagami is because he is also trying to do justice but in a very unlawful and sick and twisted kind of way. But his dad in the movie is just kind of, I don't know, just really like stoic and there's just not much to him. They don't really develop him at all. I don't get it. Anyway, that's enough about Light and his family. Obviously, you can tell that they screwed him up and it's gonna be a running theme. You're gonna find out here real quick. So now we have to talk about L. Once again, there appears to be two different versions of this L character. Uh, the one in the anime is also brilliant and genius and very logical and his deductive reasoning capabilities are just unparalleled. And they kind of got that in the movie, but not really. 
I think when the people who made this movie watched the anime and they were adapting it into a film, the only thing they got from L is that he's kind of a weird, quirky guy, and so that's the only thing that really translated over into the movie. They got the facts that he likes sweets, they got the facts that he sits in chairs weird, but, I mean, other than that, it's just not the same character. I mean, yes, they're both very good at figuring things out and deducing things from so much as a single strand of hair from a brush, but uh, the way that they're handled, it's just, it doesn't work in the movie. In the anime, Light is constantly thinking out his reasoning and explaining how he got to certain points, and you're able to follow along to see how he was able to deduce what he deduces. But in the movie, he's just constantly knowing things and there's no explanation about how he got there. He just shows up and then he just suddenly knows things. There's no ex explanation about how he knows these things, about what the mental process was for how he got there. He just walks in and is like, hey, so uh, this is what's going on. All right, let's go get him. What? No, 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 no. We, we need some explanation there. Come on. It's just a completely shallow representation of his character that doesn't take the time to really go in depth into who he is and how smart he is and how difficult he is to outwit. It's, it's so frustrating. And you know what the worst part about all of this is? The movie seems to have a fundamental misunderstanding about what made the anime work. The reason that Death Note is so good hinges entirely on the relationship and the dynamic between Light and L and the constant power struggle that they are going through. They know each other, they understand each other, they are close to each other. It is like watching two best friends who are really smart and brilliant try to outwit each other at a game of chess. It is intense and amazing. But the movie has none of that. It's just, here's Light over here doing his thing, and here's L over here doing his thing, and they meet for like one scene in the middle of the movie but they don't develop a relationship. They don't know each other at all. It's, why would you throw that out? That's the entire premise of the show. That's the whole reason the show works. Ugh, I'm so over it. Light has been ruined. L has been ruined. The relationship between them has been ruined. What about the other characters? So there's this Mia character from the movie. And I don't really know who she's supposed to be in the anime. I think she's probably supposed to be the replacement for Misa. But, uh, again, who is this character? I don't understand. I almost feel like they tried to combine two characters with Mia in the movie because in the anime there is a character later in the show that comes up and uh, she's a lot more similar to Mia in terms of like her attitude and her personality but then Mia's obsession with light seems to be explained by Misa's obsession in the anime, so it's just, uh, I don't know what they were doing with Mia. To be honest, I think they should have just gotten rid of that character completely because it was just dragging the whole moving down and adding an element that honestly wasn't that interesting and was leading up to a twist that you could see coming from 10,000 miles away. It's stupid, so stupid. I will admit, at least Mia in the movie is far more tolerable than Misa in the anime. She's way less annoying, way less chatty. She actually has some brains to her. I mean, not much, but they're there. And then we have Ryuk, who probably gets out of this the most unscathed, but still has some problems about him. So I think what they were going for in this movie is they were trying to create a darker and sort of more mysterious Ryuk that had a little more influence, which I guess it's kind of a cool idea, but again, it's not really who Ryuk is in the anime. In the anime, Ryuk is really more of this character that just kind of sits back and watches all the chaos and mayhem happen because he's a sadistic bastard that just, you know, enjoys watching the world burn. And I mean, he doesn't really do much, he just watches, you know? In fact, in the anime, Ryuk doesn't even care who picks up the notebook. He just drops it in the human world because he's bored and he just wants to see what's going to happen. It just so happens that the guy who picks it up is a complete psycho and really smart and actually does some really insane stuff with the Death Note. But in the movie, it's implied that he drops the note specifically so that Light could pick it up as if he were chosen because there was something special about Light, which again, doesn't make any sense because there's 
absolutely nothing special about Light. He's just a dumb high school student. And then there's always this implication that Ryuk is having some kind of influence on all of the stuff that is happening around him. Like he is directly responsible for all of the bad things going on and it's not just the Death Note. That That's another issue I'll get to in just a second here. But anyway, on top of that, in the movie, they keep Ryuk really dark and in the shadows all the time and he's always kind of concealed so you can never see him that well. But in the anime, He's not like that. Ryuk is constantly out in the open and he's just kind of chilling there hanging out because people can't see him anyway unless they touch the Death Note. And he doesn't care if people see him, he's just there to hang out, he doesn't care, he's really apathetic. I don't know why they chose to hide Ryuk's face and his presence in the movie so much, trying to make him this dark mysterious figure when that's really not who he is, he's just kind of a sadistic goofball that's enjoying watching all of the shenanigans that are going on thanks to the Death Note. I mean, I guess Willem Dafoe still did an okay job of portraying him, but to be honest, I really don't know if he was the best choice for this one. I don't know who I would have cast in his place, but you know, to be honest, Bill Skarsgård, who is now famous for playing the role of It in the new It movie, probably would have been a better choice for this role. So anyway, that's enough about the characters. What about the rest of the movie? Also sucks, they missed so many things, they misinterpreted everything. It's just, it's just a mess all around. I don't know what they were thinking when they made this. First of all, the rules of the Death Note. So in both the anime and the movie, the Death Note has rules written into it and they're handled very differently in both versions. In the anime, there's actually a lot of focus on the rules and about how they work and about the different ways that you can manipulate them. It's part of what makes Light such an interesting character is to see how he takes these rules of the Death Note and uses them to work to his advantage. There is some emphasis in the movie on the rules of the Death Note and how it works, but nowhere near as much and Light doesn't really use those rules to his advantage at all. In fact, half the time, the rules just kind of pop up out of nowhere, out of convenience for the plot, and they're not really woven into the actual story and how things work. On top of that, it seems to me that in the movie, when you write something in the Death Note, Ryuk then goes out and is responsible for making it happen. He is the reason that what you write in, in the Death Note actually happens. He goes out and he does it. But in the anime, he has no control over it. He explicitly says like, I don't have control over the Death Note. Whatever you write in there is what happens. You know, I can't influence anything. So why in the movie does he suddenly have the power to grant the death wishes that are written in the Death Note? I don't get it. That's, that's such a strange change that is completely unnecessary. There's also the methods in which the people die in both the anime and the movie. So in the movie, Light is not at all concerned about how people die, and he sometimes does use the Death Note to manipulate them, but it's not that often. Most of the time, he just writes their name in the Death Note, and then they just die of a heart attack. He doesn't actually care about creating these big flashy deaths that, you know, would be cool to look at. He's just, all he cares about is his agenda, pushing his agenda and ridding the world of crime so that he can be the new god. The movie has this strange obsession with killing people in the most grotesque and gruesome and over the top cartoonish ways possible. I mean, yeah, I guess it is more fun and interesting to watch, but it's a complete betrayal again of the character Light and of the tone of the original anime. The movie doesn't even seem to understand the basic tone of the anime. The anime is very calm and deliberate and calculating. The movie is like a manic teenager hyped up on sugar and coke and it's just its crazy, it's all over the place. The movie just constantly throws things at your face and all these pretty lights and flashes and action and gore and it's just like, what are you doing? None of this happens in the anime, this is absurd. It doesn't even get the use of color right. That's not to say that the movie is not colorful, it has a whole lot of colors in it, believe me, it's a very, very colorful and flashy movie. But the anime used colors in a very deliberate kind of way, a very purposeful kind of way. It was especially used in the contrast between Light and L, because Light was evil, so he was constantly represented by the color red, and L was the representation of good, so he was blue, and there was this constant contrast between them, and it was so cool the way that they used the lights to sort of represent their ideals and their extreme opposite ends. The movie has some like cool uses of shadows and some really striking and distinct colors, 
but there's not that clear line between good and evil. There's never any indication of that. There's just like these colors meant there to look cool. It's just, it doesn't feel purposeful. It just feels like an aesthetic thing that they put in because it seems like a neat thing to do. And you know what? For all of the things I've talked about, I could have forgiven some of it. I could have had something good to say about the movie if they had done something cool with the ending. I will admit, I was a little bit disappointed with the way that the Death Note anime ended. I'm not saying it's a bad ending, I was just a little disappointed. I know I've already been giving spoilers left and right here, and so this is just gonna be another one, but without giving too, too much away, L actually dies in the anime. Light gets to him about two thirds of the way through. And the second this happened, I just felt like it was a huge mistake because that was the driving force of the show was that constant power struggle between Light and L. And so when L died, when he was killed, it just removed all of that momentum and all of that thrilling tension. It just, it wasn't there anymore, at least not at the same level. And so it seemed like maybe the movie was going to fix this and actually do something better with the ending because they kept L alive through the whole thing. Nah, why would they do that? That'd be smart. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? The ending of the movie, first of all, it sets up for a sequel. <laughs> yeah, like that's ever gonna happen the way this was received. Oh God, please, God, stay away from any more anime adaptations ever, Netflix, please. And then even though they kept L alive throughout the entire movie, he just, he ends up like kind of going insane at the end. He's just kind of crazy. It seems like he's gonna turn into another psychomaniac just like Light. And I'm like, why, why, why would you do that? Actually, on that note, I just thought of something else they screwed up about L in the sense that they didn't even get like his energy level right. This is L from the anime. If Kira used those criminals to conduct an experiment of some sort, it means he's about to start something. If he moves now, there's a good chance that the FBI will notice someone acting suspiciously. This is L from the movie. But the name is an intentional misdirection. He wants us to believe that he's Japanese, operating a half a world away. He's not. Kira's in Seattle. This is a terrible movie. It's, it's a terrible movie and an even worse adaptation of great source material. I didn't even know you could screw something up this bad. You were handed a gift horse and you proceeded to chop off its legs and shoot it in the head. Good job, Netflix. You really nailed that one. It honestly, it just, it seems criminal what they did to this property. I, I can't believe how badly they messed it up. It's just, it's a total mess. It's a complete waste of time. One of the worst, if not the worst things I've seen on Netflix to date. I, I can't believe this. If you do want to watch it, that's fine. Just be warned, it's not going to be a good time. I know I gave it a thumbs down the first time, but uh... <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. So I know that it's taken me a very long time to finally get to the end of this Death Note saga, I guess we'll call it. Uh, so I apologize for that. I know I've been dropping the ball lately, but it's finally here. It was even worse than I could have possibly imagined after watching the anime. I, I it's just, it's, well, you saw the review was bad. It was really, really bad. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, yes, I know that I've been kind of sparing on YouTube lately. I haven't been uploading a lot recently. And again, there is a reason for that that I will be talking about in a video that I'm going to hopefully be uploading in a few days. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. I, I really appreciate if you stuck around for all of anime month and for, you know, this extension into anime month. So you kind of got two months of anime there. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. You can also head over to Twitter and over to Facebook and follow me on there. And as always, if you want to know your flicks, you know where to click. Happy hunting, guys. I'll see you next time.